you all in SST College of Arts and Commerce. This is SST Edupedia. Myself Madhu Tirthani. Today I am going to take one of the important topic which is useful in SEM 6, TYPAP and in SEM 4, MCOM. The topic name is Valuation of Business. Why we are valuing the business? Of course, there are certain reasons behind it. But before finding out the reasons, we should know the meaning of business valuation. It is a general purpose of determining the economic value of the business or the company units. Business valuation can be used to determine the fair value of the business for the variety of reasons, including sales value, establishing the partner ownership, taxation policies and all. We are valuing the business, we should know as the investors required it, they want to know what is the value of the shares which they have invested in the company. There are the various methods in the valuation of business. Income approach. It determines the business value based on income. This type of valuation focuses on net cash flow, discretionary cash flow and capitalization of earning. Then asset approach. It is based on assets. This type of uh, method determines the accumulation of assets that is nothing but the net assets available in the organization. Market approach. It determines the business value in relation to the similar companies. This means that we are comparing our company with the other companies which having a same line of business in the market. But before going for the business valuations, we have two ways to calculate the business value. First is valuation of goodwill and second is valuation of shares. We will first understand the meaning of goodwill. It is a good name or reputation earned by the firm. It is an intangible asset. It is the value of the business over and above the value of its assets. It is a difference between the purchase price and the value of net asset. It has a positive impact on the sales turnover. Suppose if, a, if your business is having, you have invested in the company having a value of rupees 4 lakh, but the other person is ready to purchase your shares more and giving you the money more than 4 lakhs, the difference is nothing but the goodwill which the company has earned in the market. There are the various factors in the valuation of goodwill that is, good public relation, regular customers. We are having a loyal customers. The customers will not leave you. The customers is depending on you for the products which you are giving. If you are providing the quality services, quality products at a reasonable prices. Your management skills. Using the different ways to attract the customers. Using the various management skills, technical skills, intellectual skills, which helps or which benefits to the public. Location of the business is also very important. Good relation with the suppliers. That is nothing but giving a regular payment to your suppliers and providing the regular and very good services to your suppliers also and getting the good services from the suppliers also. Employees. That is the employees will never you leave you. The employees turnover ratio is less in that company. This means that the company is having a good will. For example, Reliance Company. The person who is working in the Reliance company or in the Google company will never leave that company because they are having a good amount of goodwill in the market. There are the various methods in the valuation of goodwill. First one is simple average profit method. Second is super profit method. And third is weighted average method. And fourth is capitalization method. We will discuss one by one. In the simple average method, the goodwill is calculated by having a formula that is nothing but average profit into number of years purchase. Whereas the average profit is equal to total profit upon number of years. Suppose you are having the average profit of 5 years. You have to uh, uh, sum up all the 5 years profit divided by 5. You will get the average profit. And the average profit into the number of years purchase is nothing but the goodwill. But what is the meaning of number of year purchase? It means the number of years for which the firm is likely to earn the same amount of profit. Things to be considered before calculating the average profit. 
any abnormal profit means jo profit kabhi kabhar hote hain should be deducted from the net profit of that year any abnormal loss like loss by fire should be added in the net profit of that year and non operating income like income from investments should be deducted from the net profit of that year second is super profit method goodwill is calculated on the basis of super profit that is the axis of actual profit over the average profit goodwill in the method of super profit is calculated as super profit into number of years purchase but for calculating the super profit the formula is average profit minus normal profit and for calculating the normal profit the formula is capital employed into number of years purchase sorry capital employed into normal rate of return weighted average profit this method is a modified version of simple average profit method in this method each year's adjusted profit is multiplied with the respective number of weights in order to calculate the total product and the total product is then divided by the total weight to calculate the average weighted average profit the formula for weighted average profit is total product or you can say total profit divided by total of weights Suppose the weight is one, two, three, four. That means one plus two plus three plus four is nothing but your total weight. Goodwill. Goodwill in that case, goodwill is calculated as weighted average profit into number of years purchase. Capitalization of profit method. This is the fourth method in valuation of goodwill. However, the capitalization of profit method has been further divided as capitalization of average profit method and capitalization of super profit method. In both the year, in both the method, we have to calculate. the uh, we have to calculate the goodwill like average profit divided by nrr that is nothing but the normal rate of return into 100 and the super profit into no, divided by normal rate of return into 100 now the second part in the business valuation is valuation of shares why there is a need for the valuation of shares we require this valuation at a time of amalgamation of the company when the loan has to be granted from on the basis of the security of the shares when the preferred shares or the debentures are to be converted into the equity shares or when the equity shares are to be compensated on acquisition of the shares by the government under the scheme of nationalization whereas the factors affecting the valuation of shares are the nature of business it depends upon the nature of business what type of business you are carrying out it also depend upon the demand and the supply for shares suppose if the demand for the shares is more that means the valuation of shares that value of the shares will also be more it depend upon the government policies also it depend upon the past performance of the company if the company is having a very much good performance in the past few years in that case the value of the shares will be more prospectus of the company future prospectus of the company future prospects of the company you can say the management of the company is also very important in the valuation of shares also the economic climate and reserves which they are having that is nothing but resource and surplus the accumulated profit which they have kept as a reserve and the other thing is bonus or the right issues which has been given to the existing equity shareholder also increases the value of shares this means the company is having a much more profit at the same time the dividend which has been declared by the each year and if in each year the dividend the rate of dividend is increasing that means the company is having more profit indirectly the value of shares will increased there are the various methods for the valuation of shares net asset method yield basis method and dual method dual method is also called as a fair value method net asset method it consists of excluding goodwill Under this method, the net asset, tangible assets, are estimated in order to value the shares. That is nothing but assets less liabilities. It has been taken at the market value. Assets has been taken at the actual values. That is market value, not at the book value. Whereas the fictitious assets like preliminary expenses are to be excluded, and the liabilities are to be deducted. Non-trading assets are to be included in the assets, whereas the amount payable to the preference shareholders is also been deducted. In simple term, I can say that assets less liabilities, less fictitious assets, less preference share capital is nothing but assets available to the equity shareholders, and then value of per share under this method is nothing but assets available to the equity shareholder divided by the number of equity shares. 
whereas the other method is net assets including goodwill in this method goodwill is included with other tangible assets for the valuation of shares goodwill is taken at actual value which may be more than or less than the book value there may be some value of the goodwill even if it is not shown in the books that means if there, we have to first calculate the goodwill then only we can calculate the value of shares of that company here one example is given asset is rupees 10 lakh and liability is rupees 2 lakh number of shares is 50000 the value of shares that is nothing but is equal to 8 lakh divided by 50000 that is rupees 16 per share yield method following steps are taken while calculating the value of shares under the yield method which is also called as a earning capacity method here the first step is calculation of average expected profit that is nothing but profit available to the equity shareholders in this we have to take average profit after tax then any kind of a reserve which we have to transfer and preference dividend has to be deducted then the second step is calculation of expected returns and the expected rate of return is nothing but expected profit divided by the equity share capital into 100 and the last step is expected rate divided by the normal rate into paid up value of per share this can be explained with the help of an example which i have set it out 2009 percent preference shares rupees 100 each that is nothing but 2 lakhs 50000 equity shares rupees 10 each that is nothing but rupees 8 per share paid up that means 50000 to 8 is nothing but 4 lakhs expected profit before tax is 2 lakh 18000 and rate of tax is 40 percent let's see how we can solve it out first step is calculation of profit to the equity shareholder we have got the earning profit before tax that is 2 lakh 18000 then we will deduct tax 40 percent that is nothing but 87200 that is 2 lakh 18000 ka 40% is 87200 and we are getting the profit after tax is 130800 and from that we are transferring the reserve of 20% that is 26160 and then we are getting profit after tax and transfer to the general reserve that is 1,4640. if there is any kind of a preference share capital we have to give the preference dividend that is which has been fixed as 9% 18000 and this is nothing but 86640 is a profit available to the equity shareholder then the second step is calculation of expected rate of earning profit available to the equity shareholder divided by the total paid up capital that is nothing but 4 lakh it is not 5 lakh even though we can say that it is a 5 lakh but the paid up value is only 4 lakh because 8 rupees has been paid paid up by them this means that is rate will be 21.66% Then the last step is calculation of the value of the equity shares. We will calculate it as, and the paid-up value is rupees eight. In that case, the value is eleven point five one. Now the last method in the valuation of good uh, valuation of shares is the fair value method, which is also called as the dual method. It is a combination of both the method. We can say that we are taking the average of both the values which we have calculated in the value, that is a net asset method and the yield method divided by two. If suppose the net asset method gives a valuation of ten rupees per share and the yield method is giving the valuation of twelve rupees per share, this means that the fair value that is ten plus twelve divided by two is rupees eleven. Thank you very much. Patiently.